Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless revelation 13 16 through 18 and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. I put a microchip in my arm, and it's the best thing ever. This chip is a powerhouse. It's got everything I need. My credit card, my ID, my medical info, and even my keys. And when it's time for groceries, you just tap your wrist and bam! Transaction done. It's like magic. In a medical emergency, it can save my life. Experts can easily identify me and my medical history. I feel like a sci-fi character, and I'm loving it! This amazing chip is totally free. That's right, no more digging into your pockets. And the best part, the surgery is quick. It'll give you a cookie afterwards. I hope you see where this is all going. Society is fast moving toward the mark of the beast. This is the future the Bible has been warning about. We have arrived. John said, Antichrist is coming, the Apostle John. Antichrist is coming. We are just now where we move into the exponential phase. Artificial intelligence, but not only artificial intelligence, but also the metaverse, new space technologies, and I could go on and on, synthetic biology. Our life in 10 years from now will be completely different, very much affected, and who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. The first week of April, the Federal Reserve begins the rollout of their new central bank digital U.S. dollar. That's right. It's called the FedNow program, and it's going to replace your paper currency. Not overnight, but it's moving in that direction. And it will move the United States to a cashless society, a surveillance state where every transaction will be tracked and cataloged, where, as the Fed describes it, money that's in your account can even expire and become unusable. That's right, just like that Red Lobster gift card that you never used. China's already doing it. We already have a template for it. Once we're fully digital in our currency, that'll mean the government will be able to track absolutely every bloody thing you ever do, and also be able to do things like they're already doing in China. So they, the Chinese government has put expiry dates on some digital currency. So they, you know, if they need to have the population spend more, let's say because there is a recession, they could just put in an edict that would make sure that your money de depreciated by 2% every month so that that would be an impetus to spending. And, uh, and they could do the reverse if they wanted you to save. And so it means, uh, it means in potential the emergence of a system for comprehensive control that's so complete that we can barely imagine it. Make no mistake about it. Central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world will tell you how you can spend your money. We can see that Christians will be persecuted using this system as they will try and force believers in Jesus Christ to adhere to their evil ways. When Christians say no, they will turn off your CBDC account. I hope you see how the mark of the beast comes into play as Christians will not be able to buy or sell. And many American businesses have already gone cashless as well. They'll pretend it's all about convenience, but really, you know, it's all about control. The brilliant Catherine Austin Fitz recently described what going cashless would do to all of us. The reality as the financial system gets more controlling and more invasive, it's a little bit like bringing up a corral around us. And CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, and vaccine passports or digital IDs are sort of the last 
uh, shutting of the gate. It's hard for many people to imagine the risks here because we're so used to living with financial transaction freedom. And we don't understand that when this gate closes on us, we literally will be sitting in a system where the central banks believe that our assets belong to them and they can dictate where we can spend money and what we can spend money on. We're headed toward a one world global government with one massive, monstrous leader. A lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake. We need a single global order. All the unbelievers on the entire globe will worship this anti-Christ. He is coming in the future. He has an assistant. Starting in verse 11, another beast who is often called the false prophet who comes alongside, he has all the authority of the first beast, the Antichrist. He makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the Antichrist whose fatal wound was healed. That's the false resurrection. As Christ had a revelation, Christ had death and resurrection. He, this Antichrist, Satan uses to falsify a death and resurrection to parallel Christ. He performs great signs even as Christ did, verse 13, makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth. He deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs. It is given to Him, verse 15, to give breath to the image of the beast, that's the false prophet, so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Again, His resurrection is a false resurrection. He comes to life. He's given power and authority. Those who don't worship Him are killed, and that's kind of the picture of His reign of terror in the world there. There will be, in His case, characteristics and extent of power, the likes of which the world has never seen. This is the final Antichrist. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at his disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Now he comes in a period of time in the future called the tribulation or the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is an Old Testament and New Testament term referring to the future time of God's divine judgment on the world. And we know a lot about it because the day of the Lord is a very common term in the Old Testament. Um, that We also know about it because the day of the Lord is explained in detail in Revelation chapters 6 through 19, a time of horrific judgment on the world in which the beast, the Antichrist himself, is judged, and so is the false prophet who comes alongside of him, and so is Satan, and so are all who follow him, and they all, according to Revelation 19, will be thrown forever into hell, the lake of eternal fire. So Paul says, you don't want to be among the perishing. You don't want to be among the perishing who are deluded and deceived by Satan because they did not receive the love of the truth, the gospel truth concerning Christ, so as to be saved. They did not, they would not, they would not, and finally, as a judgment, they could not. God's Spirit doesn't always strive with man. God has an end to His tolerance. If they continue to reject the gospel and will not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved, then God will judge them by making it impossible for them to ever believe. That's why the Apostle Paul says, believe while you can, believe while it is day, believe while you may, because judgment will come when you have rejected Christ so long that you no longer can receive Him as a divine judgment. So what is coming with the Antichrist is for perishing people. And perishing people hate and reject the saving gospel. That's characteristic of them. Perishing people hate the gospel. Perishing people reject the gospel. Perishing people refuse to believe. They refuse to love Christ. They rather take pleasure in wickedness. They rather love sin. They will not believe the truth, but they will believe lies. They will not follow God, but they do follow Satan. Let's be blunt. You're either in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. Your father is either the devil or 
God. You either follow Christ or you follow the path of Antichrist. Now as believers, Paul is saying to them, you shouldn't be disturbed, you shouldn't be anxious, you're not Antichrist's crowd. You're not the devil's people. You're not the perishing. You're the ones who believe the truth and you love the truth and you have been promised to be rescued from the wrath to come. You need to be looking eagerly for the coming of Christ. You need to be joyful about that. And look at the bottom of this chapter, the last couple of verses. He writes all of this so that we will be able to understand that God our Father has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, and so our hearts should be comforted and strengthened. All of this is for comfort. He said that at the end of the rapture section in 1 Thessalonians 4. He said it again at the end of the day of the Lord section. You're going to be in the rapture, be comforted. You're not going to be in the day of the Lord, be comforted. Here he says, look, you don't need to worry or fear about being caught in this horrendous dominion of the ultimate blasphemer, you need to be comforted because the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God our Father has given you eternal comfort and good hope by grace. Good hope by grace. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist, they're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C, call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ 
and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.